Today I'm going to show you how to create thumbnails and wallpapers using the photo mode in Marvel Spider-Man 2. Let's jump into it. All right, so we're here in Spider-Man 2. We're just swinging around right now as the Iron Spider. So when you want to create your own thumbnails using the game, there's one thing you really want to do first. And that's going to be to go all the way down here to your settings and then go down here to your shortcuts. So there are two shortcuts that I always recommend if you're going to want to take pictures in the game. You're going to want to set one of your shortcuts to be setting the game to a slower speed. That way you can really try to time up the frame that you want. And then the other one is going to be to instantly launch the photo mode. You can change these to whatever you like, but you can see here that for one of them, you can you have a whole bunch of options. You can open the FNSM app. You can launch the photo mode, all of these other camera gadgets. You can do all this stuff here. You can even go as slow as 30%. But like I said, you don't really need to do a whole lot of that. You can even set some of the combat and traversal mechanics down to a shortcut on the left and right on the D-pad. Uh, but for sure, you want to have one of them be your launch photo mode whatever that one is that's up to you then back here you are going to then just want to make sure you get you swing around for a little bit and you find that perfect angle so let's say for me i am looking for one where i'm going to be using my web dash or with the arms and the uh and the jump and everything so here i'll jump up go up here i'll do the button i'll hold down or i'll press the uh, right on the d-pad for which is what I have and here we are I am right here in the frame for when he is lunging forward at his maximum here with a pretty good background so now we can really start to go into all the different moves or all the different settings and all different modes for the camera so first things first you're going to see here that if you do activate the dash, you're going to have the blue streak, but you're also going to have a lot of other particle effects that are surrounding uh, Spider-Man. So if you want to get rid of those, you can go down here to go to visual effects and you can go ahead and hit play, time it up for a little bit. Now I like it how it has a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of particle effect there up behind him. It still has a little bit here in front of his eyes. There's not really much we can do about that. We can maybe use that for a cool lighting effect. Otherwise then we can get right here and this is already a pretty good angle. So then you can set up the camera. However, uh, whatever position you want. If you really want to get super precise, you can set this precision mode to be on. So here I'll show you what it does here. Here it is with off, here it is with on. And I'm pretty much moving my controller the same amount. And as you can see it's a lot more precise and a lot more slower with your movement. Then we'll move it a little bit inwards here. I like how we got that airplane in the background there. So I feel like this is a good angle here. Then we can go ahead and then set the uh, the FOV here. This is another really key thing uh, that you really want to try to get some experience with. FOV pretty much is field of view. How distorted does it is it going to look, or how much of the environment is going to be shown in your photo? So if you're going for more of a um, if you're going for more of a wallpaper, I found that lower FOV is best, especially for thumbnails that's where it is really really good so you can experiment and you can see here that the field of view it kind of zooms in but it really makes it so that peter or the spider-man is the subject of this photo so i already really like this how it really kind of shows the uh, outfit or the full details of the iron spider suit here so i have it here where i can then go ahead and say okay let's go with the uh, exposure we can bring that up a little bit to show some of the brightness focus distance now this is what's going to be showing what's in the background and everything for me i really like to have uh, a lot of the background blurred out so i'll drop that down to four or five and i'm going to bring this up and as you can see i can bring the aperture up here then you're going to see how the background gets more and more blurry now if i were to lower this all the way down to uh one you're going to see that the edges of the tentacles or the uh arms on the back not tentacles the spider arms those are going to start getting blurry and then uh, you put it at zero everything becomes blurry for me that's where you really want to make sure you don't go too low so that way you still have all of your subject in your frame then here uh, is the range near. Since there's nothing really super close, closer to the camera than Spider-Man, we don't need to worry about this. But say you have like a tree or a bird that's in the middle of your camera, then you would set uh, the DOF range near and the DOF aperture near to go ahead and overwrite that. Next here, we have our filter type. So this is where you can really get creative and have a lot of presets for some blend mode. So black and white, uh, enhanced saturation, stuff like that. You can go through them here. We can see here we have Spider-Man, we have the Noir, which is very similar to Spider-Man Noir, kind of that black and white. We have War Film, which is a little bit more retro. Vintage, a little bit more on the yellow. 
spider chrome now this is uh I found that this kind of gives off a lot of vibes to the Sam Raimi uh, ending swing of the first uh, Tobey Maguire movie. It's very powerful, just be careful with it. Um, but the one I really always like um, for creating thumbnails and wallpapers is the filmic color, as this is really kind of this that standard uh, saturation and coloring kit that most you'll, you'll see with most videos and production quality assets. So. Um, I like filmic color color another one you can do you can really experiment with all of these I mean pop art it does look pretty cool here how it gives more of that kind of blue effect down there on the bottom uh, Makes the colors pop a little bit, but for me I'm a big fan of filmic color now for the sake of this video I'm gonna use spider chrome so that way I can show you just how powerful the stuff is and how you can control the amount that you get blended Or how much you can blend so here it's set at hundred now. I'm gonna bring this all the way down to 50 and you can already kind of see it's a lot less saturated. So I'll bring this down even more. And obviously, then the lower you get to zero, the less of the filter will be applied. But now I'm going to jump all the way back up to, let's say, 70. Actually, we'll go a little bit lower, 55. And there, I really kind of like that kind of color right here. I feel like that's pretty good. So you can experiment with all of these. You, again, you can bounce back and forth between the different... Um, each of the different uh, filter types, but you can really see the difference between having a high blend, a medium blend, and barely any blend at all. If you want then as well, you can also do some frame selection, frame level, um, and even background. So backgrounds is really gonna be, if you want to create a transparent image, there are some uh, tools out there, free tools, that allow you to go ahead and automatically, they'll automatically remove a background from it. So say you want to get rid of any green color in the background, or you really want to get a transparent kind of image of Spider-Man, set this to either blue, violet, or green, and it will automatically say, hey, here's the background. I will immediately cut this out for you. So that way, then you are able to get the PNG and the transparent background of Spider-Man. But for this, we don't really need that. We'll set that back to none. Then here is a little bit more of your overlays with your uh, your vignette and your film grain and your sharpening. So with the sharpening, really, this is just going to make the textures really get a lot more refined with the image. So you can see I set this to 100 here. And now the edges of his suit where the lines are is very, very it's popping out a lot. Even the uh, textures on the shoulder you can see are popping out as well. So for this, I'm going to set this to about 20. Film grain is just kind of more of like how grainy it is. That's pretty straightforward. I've never really experimented with this, but you can see here film grain size. I'm going to buff that up. And then this, now you can see the picture gets a lot more grainy, which we don't want for a thumbnail, but you can experiment with that to have your own unique uh, design and your own unique touch with it. Then you can go ahead and with the vignette, this is kind of, you're going to see on the edge of the uh, photo here, how it's going to get more and more uh, a little bit darker. So you can see here, I'm gonna really buff up the intensity and now everything kind of really narrows in on the center focal point. We don't really need to do a whole lot there. I'm gonna reset this back to be pretty small with a little bit of an intensity here. So that way again, kind of just focuses more of that on Peter. Then if you want as well, these are all completely up to you. These are all custom. So sometimes you really can't get that perfect shot, but there are some preset poses that you can use here. So. Um, for the sake of this, I'll show you a little bit and then bring this up. So you have all these different poses that you can do with Peter. So here, um, I set it on and you can do action figure mode, which will bring you down to about the size of Ant-Man, uh, character pose. You can go ahead and just cycle through each of these. You can also change the facial expression. So you can be, you have his eyes really open. You have his eyes really focused, open, or then you can have him wink and then you can have him super focused like that. I feel like that's a really nice touch. Uh, however, you cannot change the facial expression if you do not have posing enabled, so just remember that. But there's about 20 poses for Peter and Miles uh, all while they are up in the air. This is one of my favorites. If you've seen any of the promotional art from the first game, this is one of the more iconic poses there. Um, so in all honesty, we can go ahead. I'll we'll roll with this one because I already like how it's kind of in the background like that. And I'm going to set this to six. That way it's super focused on that right there. So I feel like this is actually a pretty solid image right here. So then we can go ahead and I'll also one other thing you can do too. You can set the rotation here to have him be facing any direction you want. You can go over zero and over or over a hundred. It'll automatically set the scale back to what you need it. That way you can, if you're looking for a very specific value, you can just keep going and it'll keep rotating. Then you can move him forward. You can move him back. 
You move them left, move them right, move them up and move them down. Super uh, straightforward, very, very uh, extensive, allow you for customization. That way you can even readjust the character to be in the correct position that you want them to be. Then we have some lights. If you really want to experiment with the lighting, say that the sunlight is not in the direction is not in the direction you want, it, or you want to have uh, custom color lights, kind of to reflect like street lamps and everything, you can do that here. For me, this is fine. I'm not going to change much. If you want to even add stickers, this is what this last side is here. You can have uh, a bunch of stickers here. Where this is, I believe, I think these all come with the game, but you can then just, uh, these all kind of reflect like kind of the different emojis for the Spider Man. So, say here I have this one, I can go ahead and move it, I can hold my, down the buttons to scale it, and I can do that here. And then, um, I can add up to, I think, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, so 10 uh, different stickers in one. And then to clear it, you just hit the uh, place it, the pad button in the middle. Otherwise, then uh, I can hide the UI here and I feel like this is a really solid image. So then we just take a picture of it. 